Um, another area that we have is the isthmus and the amphitheater. This is the area that connects the two lakes together, the natural lake with the, uh, the urban lake, the amphitheater over in this area with a floating stage and the isthmus area in here. And I've actually got some kind of models here of how that would look. Uh, the amphitheater would be a floating stage out in this area. It would be movable. And then the isthmus connection between the natural lake and the urban lake. This will provide you some fun. Uh, this will be a place where the boaters and canoers can decide whether they want to take the wild ride between the natural lake and the urban lake or if they want to take a more gentle, uh, soothing canoe ride. So you can see the two routes. One is kind of twisty and, and uh, maybe have some white waters in it, and then another more gentle ride. This will be a crossing here, uh, both vehicular and pedestrian crossing for the connection between the two lakes. Uh, then we'll talk a little bit more about the natural lake here, how that's going to look like. A lot of wetlands in this area. This will be more natural, a more soft edge to it. A lot more trees, a lot more wetlands uh, in this area. Again, some trails, canoe launches in this area. Uh, you can see the floating wetlands that we have there. Uh, they also serve as not only being aesthetically pleasing, but um, they could also provide some water quality improvement and also habitat for the waterfowl. And then moving further down into uh, some additional wetlands down by the Corinth Street. We have our wetlands here. There's some existing wetlands there now, but we want to enhance it, also put a boardwalk in this area. Uh, the birds uh, really like coming into these wetland areas, so we want to afford them a chance to come down here. Maybe some playgrounds uh, in this area, particularly around the Eloise Lundy Park. We want to provide that connection to get over the levees and have that playground area. Here's kind of what it looks like today. This is actually a, an actual picture that the wetlands are, are there now, uh, but what we want to do is just enhance that and provide boardwalks uh, with synthetic de decking so it, it, it'll be sustainable. It won't uh, be rotting and, and uh, going away. So well, this will be a great place for the, uh, the, the migratory birds to come and, and people to watch those birds. Uh, another pro project that we have located at the very end of the levees is Moore Gateway Park, located at 8th Street in Corinth, near the Dart Rail Station. Uh, this was an area that used to have the old 8th Street Motel. It wasn't a very nice motel. We bought that motel and tore it down. Now we're going to have a pavilion, an amphitheater, trails, landscaping, and areas for people to just do the recreation uh, in this area. It's also connected to uh, very closely to the area where we're having our standing wave. Now this is a whitewater course that will be in channel. We expect to begin construction on this early next year. Also very near to this is the old ATSF railroad bridge which we're going to be converting into a trestle uh, trail, a pedestrian crossing of the Trinity River. They kind of all come together at one. You can see this trail down in the bottom right hand corner will actually take you back to Moore Park and we'll connect from there. You can see the two white water areas that we'll have in this area. If you're not into extreme sports, no problem. You can go down the bypass channel along there, a little bit slower route there. And you can see our Santa Fe Trestle Trail will cross over all of that. So it'll be a great vantage point uh, to look at the white water enthusiast and to look at the canoeist going by and also have a really good vantage point for the rest of the Great Trinity Forest. Uh, we also want to include art in the Trinity River corridor, all throughout the corridor. Uh, some temporary art to have local artists come out and show their artwork in the floodway. Council rings is another neat idea that we have where you may be walking along a trail and all of a sudden you come upon a, a big opening and it's just a, some sort of a, a, a rustic circle where you can have um, a, a group come and just commune with nature. Team building exercises uh, invite uh, people to come out and and um, have lectures in this area, poetry readings or whatever. Uh, and then having a major artwork somewhere in the, in the Trinity project. We haven't yet decided where that will be or what it will be, uh, but it will certainly be something that will uh, set, up, set us apart. <clears throat> Moving on to our transportation components, our Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge is under construction. Uh, this, uh, this picture was taken about two weeks ago. You can see the columns are going up on this bridge. This bridge is really going to happen. You'll start to see the deck going up early next year. Uh, the steel will be arriving next spring and you'll start seeing that center arch which is 400 feet tall. You'll start seeing that go up uh, in late spring of this year. We expect to be driving on this bridge in 2011. Um, here you see some of the steel that's being fabricated over in Italy. Uh, so it is coming together and will be coming over here very shortly. 
This is the route that we're proposing for it to take. It will actually extend Woodall Rogers Freeway uh, across the Trinity River and tie into Singleton Boulevard. This will allow the people in West Dallas and Oak Cliff to uh, access not only Industrial Boulevard, but also all the major freeways to get to downtown, uh, to get to all of those uh, venues at uh, Victory and American Airlines Center much easier uh, than they have before. Once this bridge gets built in place, the traffic is routed on it. The Continental Avenue Bridge will remain, but it will be a pedestrian bicycle bridge only. We expect to have um, concerts on it and, and festivals and art shows and all kinds of uh, entertainment facilities for that bridge. The Margaret McDermott Bridge is the second signature bridge that we're looking at uh, building. TxDOT is expecting to begin construction in 2010. Both of these bridges designed by Santiago Calatrava. Uh, this will effectively double the size of the existing I-30 bridge from six lanes now to 11 main lanes and one reversible HOV lane. And then the Trinity Parkway Toll Road, which will begin design next month. Uh, this is the route that we're proposing to take, starting at 183 on the left-hand side of your screen, coming into the levees at Hampton, following all the way down the levee down to 175 in the south. There will be exits, uh, exit ramps and entrance ramps at Hampton at Sylvan, at Woodall Rogers, uh, further down at Houston, Jefferson, uh, Corinth, MLK, I-45, and down to Lamar, and finally down to 175. Now, the, the Trinity Parkway toll road does, uh, er, excuse me, here's a picture of it looking southbound from Hampton. So this will be basically once you get on the Trinity Parkway, this is the view you'll have. And we're showing windmills there. They could be solar powered. We're allowing for some infrastructure that will allow for uh, future alternative energy that we can use and put back into the grid. It'll be put into the infrastructure of the pavement. <clears throat> now, one of the things that I mentioned that the Trinity Parkway affords us to do is to correct a, a very dangerous transportation movement, traffic movement down in, in the southern part of Dallas. Uh, 175, as it comes into Dallas, if people want to go downtown, they have to take this curve, which is very dangerous traffic movement. It actually has a special name, Dead Man's Curve. Uh, and takes you up SM Wright Freeway. Well, we're going to be connecting the Trinity Parkway to I-45, making that movement. That will be a free movement. It is not told at that point. And therefore, the SM Wright Freeway can then be taken down to a low-speed boulevard where it will be uh, have pedestrian crossings, sidewalks, landscaping, and so forth. The neighborhood is being uh, is very much involved in this, and they're very excited about it. We're going to keep them involved in this and, and get their input on how they want this to move forward. The Sylvan Avenue Bridge, as you all know, is uh, underwater about four times a year, and so we're going to make it a real bridge again. Uh, and it's, it's got a really neat design that we're looking at here, and, and one of the, the, the neat components that I, I hope we always see these blue lines, because these blue lines indicate the 100-year flood level of the Trinity River. So we always want to keep those blue lines in sight. Uh, we expect to have that uh, hopefully started in late 2009. And then finally, the Beckley Commerce intersection. This is a project that we'll be seeing uh, begin construction early next year. Uh, this is a project that we hope to have better traffic flow in this area, not so much those uh, those uh, turnarounds, those, those big rounded loops are really obsolete as far as traffic goes, but we want to make this pedestrian friendly um, also with a signalized intersection in here and the Fort Worth Avenue Development Group has been helping us to make sure this is pedestrian friendly and we're going to ensure that that, that happens. <clears throat> And finally, economic development. We have been working in this entire area to look at what we have out there now, what our zoning is. We have already completed two zoning uh, areas, the old Indu Trinity Industrial and Mixed Master Riverfront. Our next one will be Cedars West coming up in December. Then we're gonna move across the river into the Oak Cliff Gateway area. Then we're gonna be looking into Westmoreland Heights. You can see that area. Uh, in orange there. We've also got La Bajada Los Altos, which is at the landing of the Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge. Uh, we've got West Commerce right there at the uh, West Commerce and the, the Trinity Levee, and then the 10th Street Bottoms would also be an area upcoming for a rezone.